All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at some more complex derivatives. So let's say I give you y is equal to x times e to the x. Now, with our basic differentiation rules, we might notice that this is a function multiplied by another function, f and g. And we don't necessarily know how to deal with derivatives that have multiplying functions. So this is where the product rule comes into place. There is a formal proof of this. I would suggest finding it online in text form. I'm not going to go through it. It's kind of irrelevant to doing the questions in Calculus 1. You might need it in an intro to analysis course, but this is not the place for that. So the product rule is if we have two functions, f of x and g of x, that multiply each other, if we take the derivative, it is equal to the derivative of the first function times g of x plus f of x times the derivative of g of x. So it isn't simply the derivative of f multiplied by the derivative of g. Um, if you look at the proof, you'll understand that this is what it turns out to. And we're going to jump straight into some example questions. In fact, we're going to take a look at the one function I gave you right when we started. y is equal to x times e to the x. I will explicitly write out all steps for this question, but I'll not necessarily make a huge database of information that I'm going to for the following questions. So we're going to label x as our f of x and e to the x as our g of x. So these are two functions. So f of x is equal to x, which means the derivative of x is equal to 1. And our g of x is equal to e to the x. And as we might remember, the derivative of e to the x is simply e to the x. So if we take a look at our chart here and take the derivative of this function, it is f prime of x times g of x, which is 1 times e to the x, plus f of x, which is x, times g prime of x, which is e to the x. So that is our derivative. We can simplify it and take out our e to the x, so e to the x times 1 plus x to make it look nicer, but of course that's not necessary. So there we go. That is the product rule in a nutshell. Let's do a couple more problems just for practice. In fact, I'm going to give you one that really isn't different at all, but it has one extra step and it looks a little bit more complicated when it's finished, which I guess is a better example than something so simple like x times e to the x. Okay, so here's the square root of x times e to the x. And I won't write out all the steps this time, but remember that our root of x is our f of x function and e to the x is our g of x function. So when we take the derivative y prime is equal to the derivative of f which is well let's rewrite this question as x to the one half times e to the x. So the derivative of x to the one half is one half times x to the negative one half. Remember you take the power down becomes the coefficient, you subtract 1 from it, multiplied by our g of x function, and then we add our f of x, which is x to the 1 half, times the derivative of g of x, which is just e to the x. And we can factor out an e to the x again and get um, 1 over 2 root x plus root x. And this looks a little bit nicer. It shows that you know what you're doing with uh, your powers of fractions, but that's about it. I'm going to give you guys two practice questions to do, and you can tackle them both at the same time if you want. I'm going to do them separately. One is y is equal to x squared over e to the negative x. Now, we haven't talked about division of functions, but I reckon you can figure out how to do this problem without having to divide. And our second function will be y is equal to x squared e to the x. And not only do I want you to find y prime, I want you to find y double prime as well, which is the second derivative. So take a second to pause the video, try your questions, and I'll be back in a second. All right, hopefully you're able to do these questions. I'm going to make some room here. Uh, y is equal to x squared over e to the negative x. 
This is the same thing as x squared times e to the x. And when we have a negative power, that just simply means 1 over the positive power. So x squared over e to the negative x is the same thing as x squared over 1 over e to the x. And you can uh, divide and multiply to get x squared times e to the x. So when we take the derivative of this, we will get the derivative of f of x, which is 2x times g of x, which is e to the x, plus our first function, x squared, times the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. And again, if we want, we can factor out some stuff here, so we get 2 plus x times x times e to the x. Again, you don't have to factor this stuff out, it just looks nicer. Okay, second function here. Wow, what do we know? What do we know? We already know this function is x e to the x times 2 plus x. We already figured that out. But um, if we do a derivative, a second derivative, in this form, you're going to have to do multiple product rules. You're going to have to do a product rule on top of a product rule, and it's going to be a little bit complicated. So instead, we're going to rewrite this in the form above, which is 2x e to the x plus x squared e to the x. Now we already know the derivative of x squared e to the x because that was the first part of the question. So we'll just write it down as 2x e to the x plus x squared e to the x. And now we're going to take the derivative of 2x times e to the x. So the derivative of 2x is 2 times e to the x plus 2x times the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. And we can now simplify this further, and this will be x squared e to the x. I do not seem to be able to write down stuff right here. Ah, the eraser button was stuck, of course. x squared e to the x plus 4x e to the x plus 2 e to the x, which I guess we can simplify further since I'm on a roll with simplifying all these other ones. We'll take an e to the x out, and then it would be x squared plus 4x plus 1, which can't be factored out nicely, so there we're done. Uh, next time we're going to take a look at the quotient rule, so we will be able to divide functions, and that'll pretty much be close to your full arsenal for derivatives. There's just one more little step after that, and pretty much every basic non-trigonometric derivative you should be able to do without any issues.